it's good to speak with you today, Chandra, and I, we look forward to yeah. hearing, hearing your views on the topic of talent management in supply chains. Can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Yeah, brief background of myself is that uh, I am uh, uh, a postgraduate in, uh, in commerce as well as a uh, master's in business administration from uh, the University of Mumbai. I currently work with uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific as uh, general manager supply chain. I have actually had a career which uh, has uh, a span uh, right from, you know, frontline sales to now, I think, uh, head of supply chain. So I think I have had stints in marketing, I've had stints in business development, and now in, in supply chain. So I think I have uh, a fairly broad-based experience across uh, various, uh, you know, uh, functions in an organization and also across various industries. And I've, you know, started with the imaging industry, then I've done stints in uh, the pharmaceutical industry, and I've also done a major stint in the medical devices industry. So this is, in brief, my career background. Thank you. Um, my first question is, what are the most important issues with talent management in the supply chain today? I think if you look at, uh, you know, the, the, the major issues that are there in terms of talent management and supply chain, and I'm speaking primarily with reference to you know what I have seen in the Asia Pacific context. The issues are number one in terms of having competencies and skills. So if you look at, for instance, uh, the Indian situation, the number of education institutions that are actually providing you know supply chain education is extremely limited. So if you want to, you know, get somebody who is actually schooled in the principles of supply chain and uh, has a basic understanding of things uh, like, say, for example, your demand planning, etc., it would be extremely difficult to find. You, you will find somebody at a very junior level, and if you want to, you know, staff the higher levels, that, that would be, I think, a difficult uh, exercise. The second thing is, I think, uh, the fraternity of supply chain itself is a very small fraternity. So the choices that uh, that are there for you in terms of picking up people is, is uh, I think, very limited. And the third issue which is there is, of course, the fact that most of the training that you have within the organizations are mainly, you know, directed at, you know, the, the sales and marketing guys or at the finance guys. So there's hardly any, or if at all they have, they, they expanded, they expanded to have, you know, uh, uh, training on, uh, let's say, a quality for manufacturing people and operations people. So supply chain as a, a function, I think, uh, is evolving. And I think we have, you know, the, the major problem in terms of finding the right uh, set of people with the right set of competencies and skills. And can you talk about why are these issues important? Basically, I think uh, today when you look at supply chain as, as it has evolved, basically a supply chain guy was actually looked at as somebody who used to manage warehouses and stocks. But today, I think if you look at supply chain, I think it's moved from you know the uh, you know the, the conventional definition of somebody who looks after stocks and you know optimizes stocks. Today, supply chain I think is I think one of the avenues for unlocking the revenue potential in an organization. How do I say that? Now, when you look at supply chain, I think uh, today most of the optimizations that you can speak of in terms of sales, marketing, in terms of manufacturing, etc., I think has been looked at. But supply chain is one area where I think there's a lot of potential that is there in terms of, you know, first of all, improving forecasting, where you know it could you know help you plan better in terms of inventory management where if you adopt some smart techniques you can surely be able to you know bring about a lot of you know uh, working capital improvement in the organization in terms of freight management where if you do again i think uh, an optimization of the inbound and the outbound freight 
an opportunity to you know get for you uh, improvements and also the fact is i think a lot of exciting technology in terms of of uh, course it's is slightly dated now and as i speak things like you know your advanced planning optimizer which sap has introduced these are giving you you know a lot of opportunity for you to you know be, do these things in terms of making supply chain a very powerful competitive weapon in the market and do you have any recommendations yeah the recommendation that i have is i think first of all the supply chain education and training i think needs to be you know really formalized in uh, at least in many parts of asia so therefore i think uh, that there needs to be a lot of work for getting you know the supply chain uh, function established you know rather than just speak about a bit of production planning and sometimes speak a little bit of uh, demand planning there needs to be courses for people at all levels in the supply chain there are you know different levels that need to be done like for example if you're looking at somebody at a very you know uh, basic level these guys need to have basic concepts of supply chain in case you're looking at a direct supply chain i think you need to have people who need to have the orientation in terms of strategic inputs that they need to give from the supply chain point of view when they sit in a leadership team so first of all i think education needs to be i think uh, one one area where a uh, lot of investment needs to be you know uh, made 